State sale, my ass. It's a garage sale for rich people. Don't you have enough guns? You are not taking him hunting again. I don't have a shotgun. And the other one? It was one price for both. Sorry there weren't any toys here, Marshall. Do you like that bird? He doesn't need it. If you can have two more guns, he can have something that'll make him happy. It's okay. They're really antique. I don't think they know what they have or they'd be in the big tent. Very Please. good. Thank you. So that was at the IndyQ, correct? It was, yes. So now tell us the difference between producing and acting, and what do you get out of each? Oh, that's a great question. Um, acting is my first passion. I love acting. Um, producing is great because it allows you to produce your own work. Right. And, and as an actor, when you are producing, you see the other side of it, and I think it makes you a stronger actor to really understand what's going on and everything that it takes to make a film come to life. So. Now, do you think sometimes as an actor, when you're, when you're doing it, you think, it could be better developed this way, and it's kind of hard. You don't want to say that when you're on set, do you? I mean, you think, oh, it could be a lot better if you just did it like that. Is that <laughs> what inspires actors sometimes to produce things? I could do it with my slant. I could make it better, or I could do it differently. It, it definitely could. I think for Pigeon Camera, mm -hmm. uh, that was written by Stanley Ray, and I just loved the script so much, so I just approached him and said, what does, what's it going to take to make this movie? But it's another form of expression to, to produce, isn't it? It really is, yeah, yeah. It's, it's just, again, it's that bird's eye view. Mm -hmm. um, that it, you really appreciate everything that went into it when you see that final product. Now we have to mention, of course, you're not a native New Mexican. I'm not, no. You come by way of? Of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Go Steelers. <laughs> <laughs> well, not this year. Though. Not this year. Yeah. Mm, next year. So how did you end up out here? Um, from, I graduated from pharmacy school. I got my doctorate and moved to Albuquerque for a job. And that was supposed to be one year. And that was almost 13 years ago. So. <laughs> Pharmacy school. Yes. Yeah, so your popularity is kind of going right up there. <laughs> I have it? no access to good drugs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, on to our next guest. <laughs> in any case, so now you're a stand-up comic as well. Yes. And a female stand-up comic yes. in New Mexico. How does that work? Well, it's pretty new. I just started doing it in October. It's something I always wanted to try, and um, so I just went for it. Luckily, there are a lot of great open mics in town, so you can just get up there and fail and still have so much support from the, the community here for stand-up is amazing. And there, been, there are a lot of strong female comedians here, like Sarah Kennedy, Mary Bird, uh, Sarah Maury. That's, that's great. Where can we see you perform, Rachel? Our next show is at The Box on February 23rd. Uh, it's the Teeny Tiny Super Stack Comedy Show. So <laughs> it's a, it usually sells out, so people are going to go. You should get tickets online. Get tickets. <laughs> so women can be funny. Oh, <laughs> Catherine, I'm sorry that oh, you have to put you, up with we that. Usually keep <laughs> well, I'm, I'm using her as an example. Oh, my I mean, gosh. What can I say? <laughs> We're very funny. Sometimes <laughs> men don't get it. Do you find uh, that? I mean, do you find the audience kind of breaks down? Like, do you have to tailor your material so that men can kind of generally, with our crude mentality, <laughs> you know, do you have it's, to tailor, break it down for us, basically? Yeah, it's, it's pretty interesting. I mean, as I started, I had to really think about what kind of comedy did I want to do. Right. There's such a, a gamut out there, um, what you look at, and... And I'm somebody that I really like observational humor and like Jerry Seinfeld kind of material. That's something I always love. Paula Poundstone, I love. And, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's it's an interesting. But every comic has their own bend on things. But I don't look at things gender wise. I just kind of do the things I think are funny and hope that everyone else thinks they're funny too. Now we should mention who your uh, housemate is. Yes, he's and an amazing man. His <laughs> name is Mike Ostrowski. And he was also in that clip with Pigeon Camera. He played um, my husband. And um, he's also an amazing roommate and 
Best friend. And he also just happens to be our next guest and is in the room. He is. So you're not just trying to pad anything before you get home, are no, you? No, he's great. That's not what you said before off camera. <laughs> but anyway, we'll cover that later. So do you ever use him as a source of the material? I mean, kind of men and women? Often. No, no. <laughs> no I, he's great because I'll bounce ideas off of him right. and, and help, helps me work some ideas out. And So yeah. you'll know you're getting the men in the audience if he laughs or if he's confused, scratching his head, going, what? <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's a good, well, he's just a good gauge overall. Yeah. <laughs> so what, it seems like you've done everything, but what have you not done yet as far oh, as artistically that you'd done. like to do? Oh, hmm. my goodness. Well, if I could do anything, I would love to sing, but I don't want to expose people to that. Sing. Yeah, no. It's well, you started well, yeah. stand-up yeah. comedy. You're, yeah, exactly. You're unstoppable. Why not? Uh, no, I really don't. It takes like a raw, there's some raw talent involved. <laughs> <laughs> but see, that's perfect. There. If you're a comic, then you could just say, I was just kidding. And if they that's like true. it, you could say, yeah, yes. I was really meaning to sing. I could work sing. it into an act just to have my fun. <laughs> just yeah. to kind of gauge it. Yeah, and then exactly. if that, it's the X factor after that, and we don't know you anymore, and you're just going on to the exactly. big time. Yeah. <laughs> Now I'm curious, what's a montanza that you mentioned with your other film? Will you please share what that is? Yes, it's um, it's a short film written by Morris Bicknell, and um, it's about a young boy who's struggling with his sexuality, mm -hmm. and his parents have turned on him, and he goes on a camping trip with his older sister and their friends, and um, some casual cruelty takes place that takes him to a really dark place. We just, it was an important story. We're all actors in the production company, um, and none of us are in the movie, but we just felt it was a really important story to tell. Um, you know, being a teenager is hard enough, and then when you're struggling with sexuality and you're getting bullied, um, mm -hmm. it's, it's a bad combination. So we just felt like it was an important story to tell, so we spent a, put a lot of work and effort into it, and we're really proud. It should be ready in the next couple months, so I'm excited. Mm. And you're going to premiere it in town? We will, and we plan on hitting all the festivals, circuit. Yeah, Excellent. yeah, but we'll definitely do an in-town premiere. Do you think there's any topics that haven't been covered yet that you'd like to sink your teeth into, something that needs oh, to gosh. be addressed? <laughs> I would love to do a project about being brave and taking chances and risks. I would like, that's something that I'd really like to work on writing and producing and acting in. How do you feel that's been lacking? I mean, people not being brave from a certain viewpoint as a woman or just a certain kind of person? Or um, I think it's about taking risks. You know, you get used to a certain life. I started out as a pharmacist, but I had dreams of being an actor. And um, it was a lot of people, there's a lot of, you know, people that are pharmacists and friends that were like, when I started, like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. and, and you just kind of have to push past that. Now they are my biggest champions and I love it. But I think that I would love to, to motivate people to take chances and follow their heart. I think that'd be even just the premise of your life, an interesting story. <laughs> Pharmacist, <laughs> actor, dojo person. I mean, it's all, that's really, there's a great material there. Fun. And go-go dancer, is that right? Oh, I haven't gone. That's, that's actually the subject matter for my next mm. well, there project. There's always yeah. Now, you're famous, or we could say infamous, for something called the kill face. Yes, that's my character on Dojo. Um, she, her name's also Rachel, and she's... Very self-confident and very not self-aware, and she she's very brave. <laughs> she's very brave. I, I, that's great. Yeah, she is brave, but um, she is suspicious of the opposite sex, mm. and to keep them away, she does the kill face. Well, we've been intrigued by that. So what we'd like to do is demonstrate your kill face, and then Catherine and I would like to try it, and you judge who does it best, oh if you don't mind. Okay. Okay. This is wonderful. So let's see the ultimate kill face. Okay. Whoa. 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 Oh, give whoa. Give me that camera. Ooh. Yes. Ay, ay, the you. camera's melting. Mm, there is a chin on that. Look at that. <laughs> wow. Dangerous. Okay, so we're going to give it a shot. All okay. right, and then Go you tell it. us. You ready okay. on the count of three? Our right. kill face. One, One two, two, three. Oh, I'm going to have to go with Catherine on that one. She got the hands involved, too. That was impressive. You know, Sorry. I knew I didn't like you from the very beginning. <laughs> Thank you, Rachel. Sure. <laughs> Oh, I don't know about the rest of you, but I've had enough. So let's just take a quick break, and when we get back, these ladies will be gone, and we'll be speaking with a local actor, writer, and producer, Mike Ostrowski. Great job.